office room call room area and I told you guys that I wanted to kind of show you guys some of the things that we use and if you remember from my previous video where I t like talked about where we slept and I showed you all our little closet of goodies that has like all of our tools that we use and the various different things when we're on call overnight things that we may need I'm gonna go in there and show you guys some of the things that we may use so this is our closet and it has like all of our various different items. We do have like a bunch of sutures here, um, you know, for if we have to put a line in, um, some other various different things in here as well. This is just bacitracin. So, you know, you'll put that on any wounds, like maybe road rash, things like that, that may need a little bit of that ointment. We have like all of these sutures here. Um, if we ever need to go in and suture anything, this is 2O ethylon um, monofilament. You can see that there. We use ethylon 2O or 3O, which I have here. If we are just trying to stop bleeding on somebody's um, like permacath or something like that, we may put a couple sutures in there. Um, then we have like other larger sutures and stuff. And I wanna show you guys something about the sutures. So I will get them out uh, just to kind of show that for you all. But um, it's important with those sutures to ensure that you're getting the right size and the right kind of suture. Uh, this is a bio patch. So um, we put these on our various different like central lines uh, or any type of line that we want to keep sterile. It has like antibiotic in it and it allows, you know, it's already like in the actual bio patch. So you put this down on the line and that kind of gives it an extra added protection because you don't want these lines getting um, you know infected we always keep like the lidocaine that we get from some of these um, these different kits that we don't use because we use lidocaine for a lot of things so this is lidocaine one percent um, you'll put that in to really just kind of ensure that the patient is anesthetized right and you know they'll be able to tolerate the procedure but I want to show you guys these sutures. So I'm going to take out some sutures and just kind of talk about those for you. So here <clears throat> I have for you guys some Permahand silk um, in different sizes. Ethylon, again, in a 3O and a 2O. And then proline in an O and a 3O in Vicryl. And so we use these for various different things. We use the Permahand silk O whenever we're putting in a chest tube. Sorry, you guys, um, a little gown just fell. But this is used whenever we're putting in a chest tube. This is used to secure the chest tube. And so this is a non-absorbable silk suture. It's braided. And so you can kind of see, I don't know if you, we can like zoom in a little bit on the filament for you just so that you can see that it has like many various different like microfilaments in there, but it's a braided suture, okay? Um, and then this is a 2O, same brand, but 2O meaning that when, when it comes to sutures, you would think, oh, the larger the number, the larger the suture, or the larger the needle, but that is not the case. So when it comes to sutures, the smaller the number, the larger the needle, and the larger the suture. You can really see it a lot better with this O proline and 3O proline. So you can tell right here that the O proline, the needle, is way larger, right, than the 3O. 
And then also, if you look at it closely, you can see that the filament is actually smaller, like that actual, it's kind of like a nylon thread. It's a lot smaller. So again, here with the 3O and the 2O, right? So larger the number, the smaller the filament. So again, you can see the 3O is a lot thinner than the 2O. And these, all of these sutures here, this one, this one, and this one are non-absorbable sutures. Now this suture, this is vicrelin, so this is an absorbable suture. We put this in like our more inner layers, like um, the dermis, if we're trying to like make sure that uh, it, it's like a really big laceration, but um, we want to make sure that it pulls together really neatly we'll use Vicryl. Yeah, so we'll use Vicryl if we wanna make sure that it pulls together extremely neatly. And so you'll put the Vicryl down into the suture, like into your laceration, into the most inner part. You'll pull that together. We usually just do like some simple interrupted sutures. And if you haven't seen my videos on that, I'll, I can always make another video just kind of showing you what a simple interrupted suture is. But we'll put a couple of those in there just to kind of pull the wound a little bit together um, because we want some extra added kind of like support for it, it not to only be relying on the outer sutures. And so we'll pull that together and then we'll use like a, a non-absorbable suture like your ethylon or your proline or something like that to kind of just pull it together a little bit more. And depending on where the wound is, we'll use various different um, sizes of sutures. So anything on the face, we always use like 5O or 6O. Um, you know, things lower on the body, like the arm, extremities, you can get away with like a 3O um, or a 2O suture. So that's what um, we use a lot of. We use a lot of sutures. And so I do a lot of suturing with all of my motor vehicle accidents that come in with lacerations or my stab wounds. So you have to get kind of really good at knowing, okay, well, what's going to bring this wound together really well? Um, if you're do dealing with like anything in the mucosa, like in the mouth, you're going to use like a chromic, which again is absorbable, but it's more sticky. Um, it sticks together a little bit more than like your Vicryl and, and you want to ensure that you're getting the right suture in because you don't want it to be like irritating or painful or anything like that. So, all right, what's up you guys? So I just got back from my last trauma. Um, it's like five o'clock in the morning. Let me show you guys the clock. 5.31 in the morning to be exact. And y'all, I am so freaking tired, but um, I can't go back to sleep because I'm literally about to get off of work in two hours. So what I'm gonna do right now is check my list. I have a list of all of the patients that I am taking care of that um, have either come in overnight or that have been on the floor. I always like fold my list in half just so that I can easily fit in my pocket so I have like a blank sheet of paper I'll show you what I do all right so list is usually like this size you know 8 by 11 usually there's names of the patients and all of the private information that I cannot show you guys because again HIPAA but um, what I do is I tend to fold it in half like this so I'm still able to see the patient's names but um, let's go on this side so I'll fold it in half like that. I'm still able to see the patient's names here, but then um, kind of all their other like true information on everything that they're here for is kind of hidden. So then I'm able to write next to their names because um, that makes it easier for me when I'm looking at my patient. I can write you know things that I need to do, things that um, have been done, that kind of stuff because there are various different tasks that you have to do throughout the day and you really want to be um, very organized to make sure that you're getting all of these various different things done because um, if you're not organized then you can miss things um, or you know like things can just fall by the wayside because uh, you, you missed it like you forgot about it and you know that's patient care so you want to make sure that you're getting things done so that's what I do. Um, so that's what I'm gonna do now, check on all of those patients. 
um, for my patient that is downstairs or my patients that are downstairs. Um, I'm going to make sure that I have all of their orders in to either admit them to the hospital or keep them for 24 hours um, in observation just to make sure that the various different things that they're waiting for um, gets accomplished. Like if uh, someone has to sober up, things like that. Uh, or just ambulate, which is walk, um, because you know they were shaken up after after a car accident. Uh, we try to keep them for like 24 hours, just to make sure that we nothing nefarious happens. Nothing like you know they don't start decompensating for some odd reason that we may have missed. That way we can catch it. So that is what I'm going to do. Um, I'm really tired, but again, like I said, it's two hours until I leave. So I wanna make sure that I'm getting all of the various different things that I need to get done, done. All right, so it is morning time. Um, I'm in our little bathroom that you guys have seen. Uh, I'm about to just uh, freshen up, brush my teeth, and get ready for sign out. You can hear like everybody else that's in the bathroom. Kind of brush my hair a little. But essentially that's it. So, I mean, that's it. I hope you guys like this video. If you do, go ahead and hit that like button for me. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can know exactly when I come out with a new video. Follow me on Instagram at Adama PA and on Instagram at Get That C University. Um, also, check us out at GetThatCUniversity.com. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will talk to you guys next time. Bye!